Well, hello. Um, thought I would take a minute to go through how to predict the type of bond that you'll see uh, when elements are combining together. That's something I didn't see as part of the video package uh, that was put together by Georgia Public Broadcasting. So uh, here it is. Here's the three different types of bondings that uh, we basically see. The first type is metallic bonding. And in metallic bondings, like they said in the videos, uh, the electrons are free to move around. Uh, they have empty p orbitals, and so the electrons can jump from one atom to the next. And they aren't locked down in any one place. And the electrons don't belong to any one atom. In an ionic bond, the electrons are transferred from one atom to another. We're going to discuss this in a little bit more detail. But one atom ends up losing electrons and the other one gains electrons. And when one loses, the other gains. They take on charges, positive and negative. And that's what forms the glue that sticks these atoms together into what we call their crystal lattice. Finally, there's the covalently bonded molecules. And this one is where electrons are being shared between two atoms. Both the atoms own the electrons that are part of the orbitals that it's being shared between. And so neither atom can really separate itself from the other without becoming unstable because it wouldn't have its octet of electrons then. So these are the three types of bonds. Let's talk in a little more detail about what causes this different type of, uh, what causes these different types of bondings and then how to identify it uh, when we're taking a look at a particular substance. So if we want to be able to predict the type of bond, it's going to depend upon what we call electronegativity. Electronegativity is how much pull an atom has on the electrons when it's in a bond. Now, this, uh, between the two atoms, there may be, uh, one may be pulling on the electrons much more stronger than the other one. And when this happens, it may pull hard enough to actually take the electron away from the other atom. Now, nonmetals, they tend to pull really hard on the electrons that are in a bond, whereas metals tend to be rather weak. So in a previous unit, we were talking about trends. And if we look here at this table, we can see that the electronegativity trend as we go across the period from left to right is that electronegativity is going to increase. And the place where we see some of the largest gains in electronegativity is once we cross this line right here, which is the line that separates metals from nonmetals. So on the metal side, we tend to have a fairly weak pull on the electrons. And on the nonmetal side, we tend to have a very strong pull on electrons. Um, metals tend to want to give up their electrons and lose them, whereas nonmetals tend to seek out other electrons and to gain uh, electrons in the process. So in identifying these different types of bonds based on electronegativity, it really is going to depend upon which uh, two elements, which two types of elements are actually put together. And I always tell my students in my classroom to take a look at the first element if the first element is a metal, then you're going to be looking at an ionic bond of some type. Because if you have a metal and a nonmetal that are grouped together, you're going to have something that doesn't pull on electrons very well, and another type of atom that's going to pull on it very hard, and the nonmetal is going to take the electron away from the metal. So if you see a substance like sodium chloride, we can see here that sodium is on the metal side. Chlorine is on the nonmetal side. 
And when we have this type of combination, it's going to result in an ionic bond. Covalent bonds are bonds that are formed between nonmetals. Both are pulling on electrons with a fairly significant amount of strength. Now, I've chosen carbon and hydrogen, and you recognize hydrogen as a nonmetal, I hope at least. Uh, in this diagram, it has it colored uh, sort of like what we would call a metalloid, but uh, hydrogen tends to have a fairly strong electronegative pull on electrons in a bond. So carbon and hydrogen almost pull with equal strength, which makes it so that neither one can take the electron away from the other. The only thing they have left to do if they want to try and stabilize themselves is to share electrons with each other. And finally, we have metallic bonds. And metallic bonds will be really easy to recognize because everything's going to be a metal in it. In fact, here I just have iron, Fe. It's going to act like a metal. And metals tend to lose their electrons, and so they can just wander all over the place, and making it so that those electrons are free to move around. So following this, um, you're probably going to want to take a look at a quiz that I have set up. And in the quiz, I'm going to give you formulas like NaCl, and I'm going to ask you to predict what type of bond is present in sodium chloride. And you are going to take a look at that first element. If it's a metal, and the second one's a nonmetal, that's going to be an ionic bond. But if that first element is a nonmetal, is definitely going to be a covalent bond.